The value of shrubs in gardens has been slightly forgotten over the last few years because, of course, you can get such wonderful impacts from perennials and bulbs and annuals and grasses, as you can see here in these gorgeous borders at Gravetie Manor in Sussex. But shrubs are growing in popularity because they're so incredibly easy to look after. They add structure and height and presence in your garden. They anchor a border, they can screen something, and they are really easy to look after. Once you've planted your shrub, you need to keep it watered for a couple of years if you've got dry summers. But if you've got quite wet weather, you don't even have to do that. And most shrubs need one annual pruning a year. And that's really it. So they don't need deadheading and they don't need dividing and they won't spread all over your garden. And shrubs with flowers and berries are very good for pollinators and food for birds. So I've come to one of the most beautiful gardens in England, Gravetie Manor in Sussex, to talk to head gardener Tom Coward about what the best shrubs are for autumn colour in small gardens. And I'll add a bit of extra detail as well about each shrub, and I'll put the links in the description below to each shrub's botanical name, because Shrubs are often called different common names around the world, and so if you want to be sure of getting exactly the right shrub, you need to check the botanic name on the label or put it into a search engine. I'll also put links to Gravetie Manor, Hotel and any other resources. The Middle Size Garden has weekly videos with tips, ideas and inspiration for your garden, so if you don't want to miss them, click that red subscribe button, it's free, and you'll get the videos every time you open up YouTube. And if you want to be sure of getting a notification that the latest video has just been uploaded, click that little bell beside it. Gravetie Manor was originally created by the famous gardener William Robinson in the Victorian times and he's generally known as the grandfather of the modern gardening that we do today because he pioneered things like the herbaceous border and like the wild gardens and he's sometimes called the Irishman who taught the English how to garden but he's absolutely at the heart of English country garden style. Tom Coward runs the gardens in William Robinson's spirit, which means he continues to innovate and pioneer and experiment, as well as cherishing the plants that William Robinson would have known. So over to Tom now to find out what the six best shrubs are for autumn colour in your garden. So it's really hard to pick six shrubs for autumn colour because there's so many wonderful plants to use and it's such an incredible time of year. So, uh, but if I'm just going to go off the top of my head for six shrubs, and we'll go for fairly small things that can fit into the, uh, what's about to say, smaller garden, but any garden, and we'll start with this beautiful Japanese maple here called Acer japonicum aconitifolium. Incredible colour that changes through the autumn, but on top of that, you've got to be looking for plants that have got a year-round presence, and the beauty of this maple is that it has really incredible flowers, as well as uh, really lovely um, spring foliage. So Acer japonica maconita folia, and there's one. This can be a small tree or a large shrub, and like mo most Acers, it's happiest with some shade. It, they usually don't like to be in full sun, which of course makes it a very good tree or shrub for cities, because you often get a lot of shade from buildings. This Acer is very easy to look after. It only needs light pruning, just a bit of shaping in late winter or early spring. And if you have very dry summers, then don't forget to water it quite regularly during the summer, but otherwise it's really easy care. Uh, and then we're going to go for the winged Euonymus, Euonymus alatus. Um, you can get a smaller form, compactum, and, and the normal form. Bright red through the autumn, uh, even in the winter it has these really interesting bark. Uh, we've got it planted here at Gravetie, the place that really makes me think of this plant is at Western Bear Arboretum where they've planted it in massive drifts. So uh, that's the winged euonymus, that's number two. The winged spindle, Alatus, is also known as burning bush. And burning bush in a few parts of the United States is illegal because it's seen as an invasive non-native plant. Now the thing about easy care shrubs is that of course in certain environments they can get very invasive. It's sort of they, they grow easily and that's just really what happens. So it is worth checking which shrubs are illegal where you live. But burning bush is absolutely fine in the UK and in many other parts of the world and in most parts of the United States. It has beautiful spring flowers and these turn to yellow or purple autumn fruits and then it has this fantastic autumn colour. So it's a fantastic plant for wildlife and it's just so striking. Burning bush will be happy in both full sun and partial shade. 
and it's happy in both sheltered and exposed conditions, so it really is a very easy shrub to grow. Number three, I think the humble azalea, Japanese azalea, um, uh, uh, rhododendron luteum, of course. So we know this for the spring flowers, uh, beautiful scented flowers, but if you see it at the moment, crimson, scarlet, autumn colour, really lovely thing. Um, so we've got three. So rhododendron yellow azalea is known as rhododendron luteum and this also is a plant that can be invasive in certain parts of the world. It's legal to grow in Britain but you must prevent it from escaping into the countryside. So that means that if it self-seeds itself outside the borders of your garden you do need to pull it up. My parents lived in Surrey and rhododendrons and azaleas were almost the only thing that could grow because they had very poor sandy soil. So I have very fond memories of their blazingly beautiful flowers in spring. And in autumn, some rhododendrons and azaleas are evergreen, but others do have fabulous autumn colour. So they are a plant worth looking at if you have dry, sandy, rather acid soil in which lots of things don't grow. Number four, we'll go for Viburnum opalis. It's a British native, has, comes two sizes, you can have compactum and the normal one, uh, as well as its lovely autumn colour, it's got really good berries and has a presence all through the autumn. Viburnum opulus is also called the snowball bush and it has lovely pretty pom-pom white flowers in spring and usually berries in autumn and this lovely autumn colour so it's a really valuable plant and once again it's so easy going. It'll grow in pretty much any aspect north, south, east or west. Many larger shrubs today have smaller variants and those are usually called compact or compactus and you can get a compact viburnum opulus just as you can get a compact winged spindle as well. So check on the label if you have got a smaller garden and you want a smaller version it's really worth making sure that you've got either the shorter smaller version or that the ultimate height is going to be fine for your garden. Okay. So number five uh, we'll go for the humble Cornus alba or Stolonifera. Um, they're looking fabulous at the moment. Now we know these for their winter interest with their stems, but let's not forget how um, charming the, the autumn colour is. And of course, the yellow stemmed ones have yellow foliage and the red ones have um, red foliage. And it's looking really quite lovely at the moment on our drive. Uh, Midwinter fire with yellow foliage with Fabina bonariensis going through it and the purple and the yellow contrasting is, is really nice. Cornus are commonly known as dogwoods and some of them are best chosen for their beautiful spring flowering plants like this Cornus Norman Haddon in garden designer Posey Gentle's garden and other Cornus varieties are best for their autumn leaf colour or their bright vibrant stems in winter so just check that on the label. For the final one we have picked the blueberry Vaccinium corymbosum and uh, blueberries are really, uh, they could be grown a lot more in the UK and they're beautiful fruit but also beautiful plants. They've got really good spring, spring flowers and at the moment their autumn colour is stunning. Uh, but yeah, best of all, at the end of summer you get some of the most delicious fruits you can possibly eat. So that's uh, six autumn shrubs. Blueberries will require quite neutral to acid soil, so not every garden can grow blueberries but they do grow well in pots. So if your garden grows rhododendrons and azaleas well, you'll grow blueberries well. But if it doesn't, put the blueberries into a pot and use ericaceous compost, which is compost suitable for plants that like acid soil. Gravetie Manor is probably one of the most beautiful English gardens and if you love English country garden style I've got a playlist at the end of this video with more English country gardens and tips for your own garden in each video. And if you'd like more tips, ideas and inspiration for your garden, don't forget to click that red subscribe button to get free videos every time you open up YouTube. And thank you for watching. Goodbye.